Hey folks, Dennis Hancock, University of Georgia Forage Extension Specialist, the grass man, here today talking a little bit about uh, stockpile tall fescue with uh, Mr. Ted Hughes uh, here at uh, Chantilly Farms, beautiful place, uh, one of my favorite places to come visit and uh, uh, one of our rotational grazing farms that have uh, been in operation for a long time now, Ted. How many years have you been running this uh, this farm? We started the, the uh, we've been running the farm for 54 years, mm -hmm. but we started the uh, rotational grazing system in about 1970. Wow, I think that's probably one of the oldest ones that I know of in the state. Um, Mac Bowen and I were doing doing it together. Mm -hmm. you know, he was doing it on his farm, and I was doing it on mine. And Dr. B was kind of uh, he was our mentor on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Elvis Beattie was uh, one of my predecessors back at that time and uh, one of the early proponents of uh, rotational grazing and and uh, so uh, you've had lots of experience with that and one of the things that of course that kind of comes along with that is the opportunity to use stockpile tall fescue. Uh, you can kind of see behind us here we have a really good stand of uh, fescue that, that Ted's been using in his rotation here. Here we are the first day of December a uh, really beautiful day for the, for December, but we've had a, a pretty pretty nice uh, fall. We've had pretty good stockpiling conditions, haven't we, Ted? Yeah, yeah it's been beautiful. Yeah, we've had uh, pretty decent rain uh, through uh, September and, and uh, October. A few dry spells here and there, but we've able to uh, accumulate quite a bit of uh, stockpiled tall fescue. One of the benefits of stockpiling tall fescue is that you do have a good stand and a good uh, amount of mass that you can graze cattle on for an extended period of time. Uh, generally speaking, we, we say that at kind of at a minimum we can get 30 days of extra grazing. How, how many extra days worth of grazing do you think it gives you on your grazing season? You know, if it's not snow on the ground, my cattle graze every day. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and sometimes I give them some hay, you know, to supplement them. Mm -hmm. but but mostly I have something for them to eat all the time that, that, that I don't have to harvest. Mm -hmm. and, and by doing that, you basically are really driving down your hay cost. Definitely. You do feed a little bit of hay, but how much hay do you feed, would you reckon, per cow per year? Uh, I'd say less than a half a ton. Less than a half ton, so roughly about a bale. A roll. Say? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like like when I'm a 35 cows. Uh, I start feed. I start feeding hay regular uh, in in the end of January, mm -hmm. and February is the worst month for me. Yeah. And and they they even though you can't see it, any any time the temperature is above 39 and a half degrees, the grass is growing a little bit, and they can, they can find it. Mm -hmm. And so we're here in in Oglethorpe County. Uh, just about 40 so minutes uh, uh, north and east of, well, really more east, I guess, of Athens. Mm -hmm. um, and so on this little latitude that we're on here, we, we can grow fescue pretty well still yet. Uh, I do believe the fescue line is probably moving a little bit further north. It used to be that we could grow fescue pretty much anywhere in the Piedmont, but it's been a little bit more challenging over the past few years. But what would you reckon is your your uh, estimate as your percent of your your farm that's fescue? Just about every pasture I have has some fescue, mm -hmm. and uh, the the way that I I manage it is if 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 the bermuda grass starts getting a little ahead of the fescue, I, I'll I'll do any fertilization more in the winter. Mm -hmm. And and the same if you know if it is the bermuda grass starts getting ahead of of the fescue it does fertilize a little in the summer. Mm -hmm. So you're you're we kind of chicken litter. Try, using the chicken litter to kind of favor the the fescue or favor the Bermuda just to create that balance, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. That's exactly what we'd like to see. And one of the real advantages of fertilizing fescue in the fall is that you can really cause it to tiller out, to bunch out, and and to put on more. Uh, individual tillers and and therefore more leaf material there too and it gets to throwing out elbows as I as I like to call it so that's a very important part of this and I also see you've got a lot of good uh, uh, Durana white clover in this mix and and in this particular paddock as well you've got quite a bit of vetch that just kind of volunteered as well the big flower vetch that was kind of a uh, an odd thing but it, it definitely uh, does quite well I was here in the spring and it was just 
glorious. <laughs> I mean, it just was beautiful. But um, so tell us a little bit, just a real quick overview of the farm, Ted. How about how big it is and, and how many cattle you're running across it? Well, right now, uh, we, we own 150 acres and we lease uh, 60 more, but it's not not all pasture land. We have about uh, about 150 or 60 acres of permanent pasture. We don't have any uh, assigned hay fields. Mm -hmm. our, our hay is excess grass. Mm -hmm. If we get to a paddock in the rotation that we don't need, we just we'll use it for hay. Any extra, yeah. And I like to harvest the grass, you know, before it gets too old. But the main thing about stockpiling uh, fescue that I, that I see is you, you have to manage the grazing. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't just let the cows go in and choose what they want to eat and and uh, you know you have you have to manage the grazing you you got when when you put them in to, to graze it you you got to leave some leaf on it mm -hmm. when when uh, when you take them off of it you know if you if you feel like you need to put some fertilizer or some chicken litter out there uh, you need to keep them off of it mm -hmm. and, you know. Uh, it's just like tomato plants or anything else. Grass is my cash crop, mm. and yep. and and the only way I've got to benefit from it is to to use it to convert it into a marketable product, and that's what I use the cows for. Mm -hmm. Right now we we kind of understock because I've been doing some heifers for, for a fella, and mm -hmm. and they're gone now, and uh, uh, so we'll probably we'll probably uh, add about 35 cows to the herd. If if we don't work something out on the heifer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh, you know we like we like to say uh, one cow per two acres, but well, if you manage it the way we manage it, you can you can cut that acreage down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the guys that are doing rotational grazing like this are usually getting about one uh, one cow for every acre and a half or so. Is that about what you're? That's what that's what I would shoot for. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And relatively few inputs from a from a fertility standpoint, right? You do a little poultry litter yeah. um, mm -hmm. uh, once or twice a year. It depends. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends if uh, if we have a, a if we take off hay, mm -hmm. we, put, we put litter back. Mm -hmm. But just grazing, the, the cows, whatever they take off of it and, and keep, what they don't put back, uh, is is minimal. Right. Know? And and. Uh, we, 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 we don't like to spend money on fertilizer, and we don't like yeah. to spend money on chemicals. Yeah. And 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 you know, when you get down to the bottom line, it ain't what's coming in; it's how much is going out. True. You know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't got too much control over what's coming in. <laughs> I just want all of it, and I want to keep as much of it as I can. <laughs> well, and the key is, is that uh, those nutrients that you are, uh, those animals are redepositing with a good rotational grazing system. You're, you're getting a good distribution of it across the whole pasture, not just in one spot or two. And we use the mineral boxes to aid in that. You know, mm -hmm. we, we pull them around, and if we have a place where the cow's not go going enough, we can just move the mineral box over there. Mm -hmm. And we try to keep the mineral box a long way from the water, so mm -hmm. the cattle have to walk every day back and forth. And and while they're going, they, they, they stop and nibble around. And, yep. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's they, a great... They You know, when you've had, a, had cows born on the place and raised on the place, they they get to know the system and mm -hmm. they like it. They mm -hmm. love it. They they look forward to to me coming, uh -huh. and and I don't have to chase them. I don't have uh -huh. to cuss them. I just, <laughs> I just it, it just everything works better when 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 you manage it right. Yeah, they get used to that and uh, they stand there at the gate wa waiting for you oftentimes. <laughs> yeah, usually about a day before it's time to move. Them. <laughs> That's right. Kids, yeah, they want Christmas to come early. <laughs> But in this particular paddock, we are we're studying, and there is a water trough kind of in the middle, and there's kind of a wagon wheel approach here, right? Yeah, right. Uh, this is uh, one of the unique things. If you ever look at an aerial photo of of uh, their farm here, you can see that wagon uh, 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 look to it. And you were talking about the water trough being down there, but you're talking about using the um, the, the, the mineral to kind of scatter the grazing around a little bit more. And of course, I think you have a little bit of shade that, that factors into that as well. And most of your shade is on the on the periphery of this wagon wheel as well, right? Well, you know, th that's one of my biggest problems is shade. Mm -hmm. And if I have a pasture that don't have enough shade, sometimes I let them go back. You know, I'll, let, mm -hmm. I'll open up a shade pasture, let them graze it down, and then let them uh, kind of rotate out of that pasture mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. And that works real well. They they, don't, it, they they pick up, they'll go across the pasture, they'll back graze. 
if you see them back exactly. grazing, it's time to move them. That's right. That's right. That was a point I was glad that you made because if you you can do that and you're not really doing a lot of back grazing there, you're basically using it as a large laneway yeah. mm -hmm. to get them back to shade. So this pasture here doesn't have a lot of shade, and and well it does now since I moved that fence. But but usually I would graze this pasture down and then open that gate. That pasture don't have any shade uh, uh -huh. on the side. And, and and they go back down back down here for shade. Uh -huh. And but they come in, lay down, they get up, and go back out there and graze. And they come in, they go down and get the water. There's no water in that pasture either, they, so they come back in for water and shade. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It works out really good though. They they, they don't mind the walking. They they never complain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you can tell by looking at them, uh, they are they are in great shape. So, well, Ted, I really appreciate you letting me come out on this beautiful December day. It it's just a absolutely day. a gorgeous day. I always enjoy your visits. And I, I appreciate coming out. It's come always on, if you don't mind me saying it, the best one of the best educational experiences I ever had was riding home from North Carolina with you <laughs> and listening to you answer people's questions, and and that was really that was really something. I, I cherish that. Well, that's the fun part of my job is that just about every call is a little bit something different. So uh, I appreciate that. Well, folks, uh, we're going to shoot a little bit more video just to give you some uh, background. But uh, we'll uh, catch up with you on the next go around and we'll see you down the road.